So today I'm going to demonstrate how any SharePoint user can surface meaningful and more useful except metadata extracted from photos and images that have been uploaded to SharePoint libraries without using any tools such as Power Automate nor any coding skills that might otherwise be required for that matter. The solution, as will be showcased in this video, requires nothing more than some insight pertaining to a few native SharePoint out-the-box features. Thus, the intent of this video and corresponding blog is to demonstrate, by way of example, walking through users through a typical steps of how you can get from point A, that being unable to surface any MX except metadata at all, natively within SharePoint at least, to point B, that being able to surface some really useful XF metadata embedded within photos uploaded to SharePoint libraries with next to zero effort. Most videos demos talk to a specific feature or capability being showcased. For this video, however, I thought it'd be far more relevant to speak to a start to end demonstration. In this case, the start state being creating a team site in SharePoint and the end state being able to showcase some awesome XF metadata for a bunch of photos uploaded to a library within that team site we create. With that in mind, let's get to it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is go and create a new team site for this demo. So if I go to the SharePoint uh, homepage and we'll give it a name, we'll choose team site, we'll give it a name and I'm just going to call it something unique. Okay, so whilst it's busy, busy creating this, you'll see there's nothing abnormal I've done at this point in time. It's just created that team site. If I finish and I go in here, what we now see is the typical standard uh, team site that's been created. I don't want to mess around too much with the documents library at the moment. I just want to show that we can do the same type of things by creating a new document library for the purposes of testing this. So I'm just going to give this a new library, a name like XF. And I'm going to show that in the site navigation, so nothing to it. Again, there's really nothing uh, abnormal about this, nothing extra. All that I'm going to do is I'm going to show, I'm going to hide uh, the modified and modified buyer fields because they don't really give us any value in terms of this demo at least. So now that I uh, have this empty document library that's sitting here, I'm going to upload 10 different files to it that I know have some, at least have some uh, XF metadata embedded within each of these photos and, you know, the, and see how much of that meta XF metadata we can actually surface within the document library as we upload those files into, into the library. So as they upload the, these 10 files, I don't know, they shouldn't take too long to upload them. What I'm then going to do is, so we can see all these files that are uploaded and any of them, if I change, it's still busy uploading. Shouldn't take too long. Quickly, let me just switch across while it's busy. If I change across to the, to the tiles view, you can see these are different. These are basically 10 different uh, photos that have been uploaded pertaining to different things. What I now want to do is I want to go back to the list view because I'd like to modify this view to see what if we can add other columns to it. So if I, in fact, I want to do this on the library settings. So on the library settings, we have a bunch of the standard vote, the standard columns that are created when uh, when the library is created. So we've got created by, modified, title, checked by, modified, checked out to. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to add a couple of extra ones from the existing site column. So things that people complain about, for example, that you can't see date taken. So let's put date taken in there. That's a, you know, pretty, uh, widespread ask so date date picture taken and i add that and i let's pick up something just obscure like con who was the who's the author i think is a more relevant one uh, so the author would be the person who takes the who took the photo so two columns i'm going to basically add over here is date created as well as picture uh, as well as the author of the of the photo we back there we now now if we na navigate back to just this library you can see that those fields are there but there's no, no information in them so that's uh, not and this is the typical complaint is that those fields do not get populated i can refresh that just to prove a point if i look at this information i click on information here you'll see that although those fields exist um, there's an author as well as the date picture tape and there's no information in it yet i know within these photos that there is actually uh, authors as well as date taken for some of these columns what i'm now going to do just to prove this uh, 
how this all works and how this uh, links together is I'm going to delete those 10 photos I uploaded and I'm going to upload the same 10 photos again. So I'm not, they're not different files, they're exactly the same 10 photos that I uploaded in the first iteration of this demo. Now watch, now you'll notice something more interesting that happens. And that is, uh, and you'll soon find out, as, so basically as these files get uploaded, suddenly we've got date picture taken as well as author. And once the rest of the, these photos get uploaded, we should see some additional metadata for that, that then starts surfacing. So again, uh, you know, these are the same 10 photos. It's finished uploading them and there's copyright information or this is just general information, who the author was, who took the photo. And almost all of them have date picture taken. So it's just about to upload it, it's complete. Um, now, well, there must be other metadata columns you can perhaps add as well that might be useful. So let me go into the library settings and let's go into select columns. And this time I'm going to choose things like copyright. Like photos can often have a copyright associated with them. Um, something like subject, you know, there's, a, there's sometimes that maybe a subject associated with the, with a photo. So I'm missing it there. Then I'm going to add a couple of additional ones and I'm going to call uh, the additional ones I'm going to be adding is keywords and enterprise keywords. And there's a subtle difference. One is that it's a managed term. Uh, enterprise keywords is a managed metadata field, whereas the other one is just a normal uh, multi-line text field. So I'm looking for enterprise keywords. It is here. There it is. Let me say okay. Okay, so again, we'll go back to the demo, to the uh, landing page, or this this uh, page over here, which shows us this view, and in in this page, you'll see that that, that there's there's no additional information. There's, there's these fields are basically all blank. If I click on any one of them and I click on info, the ones where that actually have that metadata are you know are the ones that I previously uploaded, but the columns have that uh, the, uh, I've now added to that list do not have values, they have not been populated. So, okay, so let's try the same thing we did a, a few seconds ago and delete these 10 files and then once again re-upload uh, re them. So if I click delete, so now they're gone again, same set of files, nothing changed. Select these same 10 files and what are we going to have happen right now? Busy uploading, shouldn't take too long. Now all of a sudden you can see a whole bunch of additional information that is definitely photograph specific. I certainly did not type in all these words as these photos are being uploaded. Um, you know, and uh, and this is now really showing you just how much additional information can actually be surfaced within SharePoint as long as you know what to do or how to do it. And the how to do it is in essence by adding these columns that I've selected over here where I know there is, a, the, you know, contain some embedded metadata for, in particular for photos. There may be other uh, metadata fields that you might be able to add for uh, fields besides uh, for uh, different types of content such as met, such as media files and, and, and the like. So at this point in time, I want to go and check and see in, and show see if there's any other columns we can add to this view without actually, uh, um, you know, doing any other work. And I can see that there's two columns here that weren't there before. One of them is tags, and the other one is location. Before I let me just uh, I'm going to take these just to show you what's actually happened here. Is in the background. There's been some uh, metadata extraction process, pipeline process, probably comes from the days of fast service, search service, um, that automatically generate these uh, the, these columns depending as and when content is uploaded that is relevant to, to, to populating these metadata tags. So location, for example, as well as tags would be similar to keywords. If I apply that to this view, you'll see now that uh, all of a sudden we've got additional information like key, the tags, which compared to keywords, the, the primary difference is that 
the text column has, has uh, surfaced a little bit of additional information after uh, processing the image itself and picked up that within this particular photo, which I'll, which I'll scan, to, scan to now, that's actually got a picture of a person in there and it's outdoor. So just switching across into into tile view, I'm not going to go through all of these, but but that's in essence what it's about. So there's a picture of a person and it's and it's outdoors or whatever the, the case is. The second one is going to have a cat. The, third, the second last one should also have a cat. So if I'm going to just go into list view. So this person outdoors, indoors, uh, you know, and some of them are the same. And other ones, other ones just picked up outdoor, outdoor city outdoor trees so some additional information it's a very little but subtle difference um the location as you can see in some instances has been picked up so it's actually picked up that a couple of these were taken in different places and it gives you an indication it gives you the uh, country as well as the province or state and uh, the specific city um, where that photo was taken so that's basically how that location field is populated and that means that this is all done within the space of a few minutes it surfaced a heck of a lot more information than it was there before so if i go to the library settings for this uh, document library you obviously know, know, notice the columns that I've added that have been added from the existing site columns, the author, the date, picture taken, copyright subjects, keywords, and enterprise keywords. And you see the types of fields that they are. The, as I said earlier, enterprise keywords is managed metadata um, and uh, so forth. Um, what you'll also notice is that when we were looking at that view, we were able to add, uh, we were able to, to, in the view, add two columns, location as well as keywords. And if we look at that, if we go to the views, um, just to uh, just to um, match that, you see over here in the in the views, there's there's tags and locations, and even though it doesn't uh, display as a column here, that information is is nonetheless available for you to add to different views. One of the interesting things that you'll likely come to head bang your heads with is the fact that when you add from existing site columns, one of the columns is location. And you should be wary not to add this to your list because this way, because this doesn't really give you any information. Reason being, it belongs to the group core contacts and calendar com co columns, whereas actually what we're looking for is we want the, the, the uh, location based on a photo. If we add this to the to the um, nonetheless to the to the library such that it then appears over here and it's so it's sitting uh, basically appearing it appears over here but it doesn't if we go to the columns list or if we go to the view so now the location is, is displaying over there but it actually shows two different locations fields named exactly the same thing the one is the one that that we've selected we know has location information the other one is the site column that we've added to the list and once we've done that if we go and look at the library how that what shows for the metadata as it renders this information is that again as it did before the first column location there's some information but the site column we added does not actually contain any information so there's a subtle difference that this location as appears over here is not is not a is not a, um, a column on the library per se but it is available to to surface information and different reporting techniques as are the tags so just going uh, like i said if, if we if we remove that column from from the library just so that it also removes it from the view you'll see that we don't lose the actual location nonetheless so if i go to uh, location sitting over here and i delete it and i go back to our default view again you'll see here that uh, that the location information is still there. So that's done. That's basically wrapping it up from this side. Illustration is to show you what happens to metadata as it moves around different libraries within SharePoint and OneDrive as, in, as well. So what I'd like to show you is I've got my own OneDrive folder open over here. I want to upload a couple of those files, the same files that we've been using before. Just do this to my own OneDrive folder. So, you know, so these in OneDrive, we've got no additional metadata, manage metadata fields. And I wanted to basically show what happens to this information if we move it across into that test site that we created. So I'm going to say, I'm going to do move to, I'm just selecting one of those. If I browse all the sites, hopefully the one that I created pops up. There it does. And I can, and I can choose which one to, it, it should go to. So let's just use documents for now. And I'm just going to move it to that particular folder. 
It contain now it basically says at this point in time the file or folder contains properties that will be lost at the new destination. So the properties, you know, by all accounts, is the metadata, uh, the XF metadata that is embedded in those folders. So if we move it anyway, we should lose that. Not so. Okay, so it's moving across into the documents library. Um, as soon as that's finished, we'll pop back to our site and we'll go to the documents library. So now we see, see the, two, the one file that's been moved across. I'm going to show hide columns just to get again rid of the, uh, of the fields that, and you'll notice things like location are not displaying nor tags. So again, we're just uh, simplifying this view. And um, what I'm going to do is create a new document library um, just with a subset of those, of those XF fields. So I'm just going to go into site contents, say new document library, and call it demo. Uh, one drive. And just show hide those and then edit those additional columns. Go into library settings. And we're going to pick up, we're going to add some site columns and pick up a few of the ones we've added before. So the first ones that sort of come up author, um, date, picture taken. Keywords. Okay, so now that I've added these four columns and I look at this demo OneDrive folder, there's nothing in it. So all I want to do now at this point is say, well, what happens if we take the the document that's been moved across from OneDrive and we move it to that other folder. But given that we haven't got any information here, in fact, let's just quickly add, add a column to this library um, uh, similar to what I did before and add from existing site columns. And I'm going to pick uh, the author again. I'm going to pick up the obvious ones, date taken and keywords. Okay, having added that, we look at the view. So no matter how many times we refresh this, I can assure you that information won't, won't come about, won't pop up. But what happens if we decide to move this file to the new library we created, that demo one, OneDrive? So let's say move there, and we move it to demo OneDrive, move here. Now, and this, it would be quite acceptable if all of these fields didn't move across. So let's just have a look except they did. So even though there are no fields in this library for that, there are no fields for, the, for that content in OneDrive, yet all those fields came across. What I, would like, what I wanted to show in this demonstration today is just how much information that you can actually surface within SharePoint and expose embedded XF metadata that may be stored within different types of media uh, content, such as in this case photos, or images, or possibly multimedia, other types of multimedia files. I think it's done a pretty good job. I think I've gone through, there have been many people who have wondered how this all works and fits together, why there's, why you have the ability to add certain columns to a document library, but when doing so, you can't understand why some of that metadata doesn't display, yet when you upload new documents, it does. So, you know, short of seeing something like this in action, hopefully this will give you some great insight in terms of what you need to do and the sort of uh, sequence you need to do it or, you know, and how you can get that information, even if it's, uh, even if it doesn't show up initially, you simply have to move that file or that content to a different, probably a different library, maybe even a different folder within the same site and move it back again. And all that information will uh, then come back and if it wasn't showing before. So that's kind of, like I said, the, the crux of it is that no content or metadata, XF metadata is ever removed from files when you move it around SharePoint. It's just a question of whether, whether you, the place where it's being moved to already has those site columns pre-populated or added to the library before um, that content has moved to it. Have a great day, guys.